Hey guys, it's Red Ted here, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make your very own realistic render for your car in WWE 2K24. So for this tutorial, you're going to need Photoshop and just a little bit of experience on how Photoshop works. And in this specific tutorial, we're trying to make the renders look as close and as detailed as possible to our cause in the game. Once you open up your character in WWE 2K24, you need to make sure everything is set for the screenshot. If your character has any visible tattoos, remove them because we're actually going to add it in later. My character doesn't have any, so I can move on to the next step. Next, we're going to select a pose for the render. You can choose any pose you want, but I highly suggest choosing the same pose as me so it's easy for you to follow along. I'm going to choose the last pose in the fifth last row of the male selection category. Now we're ready to take a screenshot of the character. Press the left analog stick on the controller to begin the framing of the shot. Use the shoulder buttons on the controller to zoom in and out on the screen. Make sure the frame displays everything above the knees. The knees and anything below it won't be displayed in the final render, but this is how I take all of my shots. Once you're done positioning the camera, you can take the screenshot. On the PC, you hit the Windows key plus the G key and click the camera button to take the screenshot. Make sure to take a face screenshot as well. A link will be in the description on how to take screenshots on PlayStation and Xbox systems. Now we can move on to the Photoshop section of this tutorial. But there's just one more thing. If your character has tattoos, make sure to take a second screenshot with the tattoos in the same camera position with the same exact pose. Open up your screenshot in Photoshop. On the left side of the screen, you should see an icon resembling two intersecting boomerangs. This is the crop tool, which will be used to make our image more proportional and to remove any dead space. Once you've positioned the boundaries, you can hit enter on the keyboard. Now we can remove the background. Right click the layer and hit duplicate. Click the eye icon on the original layer to hide it, select the new layer, go to the quick actions tab and remove the background. Sometimes this removes parts of the image that we need like the boots in my image. We're going to fix this by duplicating the boots from the original image and placing it onto the new image. You can skip here if this did not happen to you. Select the original layer then unhide it with the eye icon. Go to the left side of the screen and select the object selection tool. Then hold left on the mouse and highlight the removed area. Hit Ctrl plus J to duplicate the object. This is the shortcut to duplicate anything in Photoshop. Once you're done, you're going to save the image as a PNG file. Then you're going to save it as a JPEG file which will give the image a white background. Make sure both images are saved in a spot that you're going to remember. Now we're ready to put this image into an AI image generator, which will generate a realistic image of our custom character. Some of you might have done this part before, but you encountered an issue where the image looks nothing like your actual character. Don't worry because these issues will be later fixed in Photoshop. First we're going to use getImage.ai to generate our base render. Then RemMaker will be used to face swap our character's face onto the new render, and Image Creator will be used to remove the white background. Open up the getImage.ai link in the description. Copy and paste the text from the description into the prompt box. Next, open up your JPEG file, the one containing the white background, and upload it to the server. If your character has tattoos, make sure this is the image that doesn't have any. You also want to make sure the similarity to the image is set to high, and the ratio of the image is 4 to 7 because of the way we cropped it. Before you generate the image, feel free to add any extra info into the prompt box. Sometimes when you generate the image, you get the wrong age, gender, or ethnicity. To correct this, just add the proper descriptor after the comma. I'd recommend generating the image first to see if the image needs these corrections. However, I'm going to add in something before I generate the image.
Once you're ready to go, you can generate the image. This might take a minute. Once that's done, four images should be generated on the screen. Save all four images, even the ones you may think are bad. I'll explain further in a few moments. If you want to generate more images, keep in mind you'll be wasting more credits. These are the four images that I'll be considering as the base for my render. It doesn't really matter which one you pick, because you can combine the best parts of each image. Try and choose the image that looks the most like your character, and if the character is looking directly into the camera, that is a major plus. Now open the base render you picked in Photoshop. Go to the top, then click File, and select Place Linked. Select the in-game render containing no background. Change the size and the position of the image to fit over the base render. Hit enter to place the image. Now we're gonna fix the render. In this case, it will just be the trunks and boots I'll be editing. The less edits you have to make, the better. Using the object selection tool, select any region you'd like to take from your in-game render. I just need the lower half, so I'll highlight that area. Once the region is selected, hit Ctrl J to duplicate that area. Make sure you're on the right layer. Double click the text on the layer and rename it to keep things organized. Navigate to the left and select the eraser tool. Go to the drop down menu on the top and set the hardness to zero. This will blend the layers when erasing. You can use the bracket keys on your keyboard to change the size of the eraser. Now erase any part of the image you don't need. I'm going to erase the legs because I want to use the realistic skin texture from the AI image. You're going to be repeating these steps for all the inaccurate parts of the render. Try and keep as much realistic parts of the AI image as you can, especially the skin textures. Navigate to File and click Place Link. Place the in-game render that has tattoos, and line it up properly with the new render. Once that's done, select and duplicate the area containing the tattoos. Use the eraser tool to remove the unneeded areas. Click the FX button on the bottom and lower the opacity. You can use the Hue plus Saturation tool to modify the skin color. We've reached the last edit phase in Photoshop. If you feel as if the clothing in your render sticks out, select that layer and open up the Camera Raw filter. You can change the different settings until it feels just right. I'm going to lower the opacity of the clothing, for it to blend better with the AI image. Once you're done, save the image as a JPEG file. We're going to try and make the face a little more accurate to our in-game model. Open up the Rem Maker link in the description. In the first slot, select your photoshopped render. And in the second slot, select the face screenshot of your character. Now you can swap the images. Once that's complete, you can download the file. If you have a mobile device, download the Face app. Make sure to send the face swap render to your phone. In the free version of the app, you can make minor changes to the face, but most features are locked. However, we need just one feature. You can add a smile expression to give more life to the render. Once you're done that, save and send the image back to your computer.
When you remove the background in Photoshop with the method I used earlier in the video, it isn't always perfect. For our final render, we need to make sure there are no extra white lines or artifacts around the image. This is why we'll use AI to remove the background. Open the Image Creator AI link in the description. Click Create on the AI Image Editor, then open your final render image. Then click the Background tab and select the checkered square. The background is removed and you can download the final image. Before we upload the image to the WWE 2K server, download and open up the template.psd file in the description. Place the render in the template and make sure things are aligned correctly. If you're using a different pose, just make sure the sizing and the positioning of the image is similar. Everything below the knees should be cut off and the heads should be at the same level. Once you're done, hide the black layer and save the render as a PNG file. And we're done! Open up the WWE 2K Uploader website and upload your custom render. Open up WWE 2K24 and download the render we just uploaded. Open up your character in Create a Superstar and set this new image as your official render. And that's how you create a realistic render for your character in WWE 2K24. Overall, I like the way the render turned out, but obviously if I gave him a more dynamic pose, it would look less stiff and AI-like. If you guys have any questions about this video, feel free to leave a comment below. If you also know of an easier or a faster method to create these renders, don't be shy and let us know.